What's up, Star Wars fans? My name is Prince and I'm an urban acolyte. And I wanted to do a quick video to respond to the comments that I'm getting on the video that I did last week where Pablo Hidalgo stated that uh, according to Lucasfilm's marketing department, Anakin's lightsaber is now called Ray's lightsaber. So there's been a lot of backlash about that. Uh, uh, the, you know, the normal um, half brained, half witted comments from people. Well, they're going to give everything to the Mary Sue because they want uh, the next Disney princess to have everything. Right. And uh, to those people, I'm going to I'm going to give you some advice. Hop over to my bro, Mike Mahler's website, Mike Get you some aggressive strength testosterone booster. And while you're over there, also grab you a bottle of EC. That's called estrogen control because you because if something like that upsets you and gets you all uh, up pissed off and and in your feelings where you're uh, upset because uh, they're calling Anakin's lightsaber Ray's lightsaber now, like you've obviously got a hormonal issue and you're unable to think rationally. So let's sit back. Well, actually, those people are probably thumbs down the video uh, unsubscribed. Good riddance. Don't come back. And uh, they probably left me a few negative comments because they're, you know, suffering from estrogen dominance and not thinking clearly. Right. But uh, to the real urban acolytes out there, the urban acolyte familia, let's talk rationally about this. Right. So this is Ray's lightsaber. Anakin Skywalker's dead. OK, he's one with the force. He's preserved himself um, in the nether regions. Right. He can always come back at a, as a force ghost. But what does he need with a lightsaber like he what does he need with that object? Now, let's look back at the first cut of The Force Awakens. I talked about that in the video uh, where Finn's lightsaber scenes were cut from the early cut of The Force Awakens. You had a Finn who was more of the warrior that we were told about in Before the Awakening, right? And that version of Finn, uh, the way John Boyega uh, portrayed that character, uh, the, the chemistry was off with Daisy Ridley. And if you have this Finn who's running through the whole movie with Luke Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber, and he's kicking butt, and then he fights Kylo Ren, gets injured, and then Ray fights Kylo Ren to a draw. It 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 takes something away from Ray because it's like, well, why could Finn do all of this? Why did he have the lightsaber in the entire movie? And then Ray finally picks it up and she fights Kylo Ren to a draw. What does this mean? What does it mean for Ray? What does it mean for Finn? It it really leaves a lot of questions up in the air. And then the, the lightsaber was going to be the big MacGuffin. It was the key to locating Luke Skywalker. So I said all of that because elements of that are in the final version of the film. And you could say, well, they, they, the execution was poor. You know what? It's hard to, to make a, a, a movie with that much pressure on you, that much riding on the movie, right? It's basically the future of Star Wars, the future of Lucasfilm, uh, and all of the plans that Kathleen Kennedy has for Lucasfilm as far as making it a major film production company, meaning they're doing more than just one Star Wars movie and a couple of cartoons and putting out books um, in a year, right? So this lightsaber is the key to finding Luke Skywalker, the key to returning Luke Skywalker back to the main galaxy and the bigger story of defeating the dark side once again, right? Restoring uh, balance to the galaxy. So Ray's heroic journey is to locate Luke Skywalker. That's what we're seeing in The Force Awakens. She has been called. She's been having dreams of Octu and the place where Luke Skywalker has been, right? The first Jedi temple. Whether Luke Skywalker has been there the entire time, we have no idea how long she's been having those dreams. Maybe Rey has been having those dreams the entire time of the location of the first Jedi temple before Luke Skywalker even found it. And that... I mean, that even screams even more call to adventure, heroic journey. This is where she needs to go 
as part of her development, right? This is where she needs to go to discover who she really is, right? It's something Trisha Barr said on the Fangirls Going Rogue podcast. They were talking about Guardians of the Galaxy. And if you haven't seen that, um, I'm sorry, this isn't really much of a spoiler, but we discover that uh, Peter's father is Ego, right? Ego, the planet Ego in Marvel uh, comics. And Trisha Barr said that uh, it's interesting that Peter finds ego, finding his father, right? Uh, reconciliation with the father is one of the one of the uh, journeys, one of the parts of the Joseph Campbell formula, right? Just like Jen Erso in her heroine's journey, she has reconciliation with her father. She hated her father, viewed him as a traitor, and then she breaks down and cries and finds out that her father turned himself over to the empire. Um, but the entire time, uh, because their family was split up by Orson Krennic, he laid the seeds for revenge and he wanted his daughter to fulfill his mission to to strike back at what the Empire did to their family. Right. So reconciliation with the father and Guardians of the Galaxy, it's literally reconciling with the ego. And uh, I don't know if I said this already, but what Trisha Barr was saying, where she was going with that idea is that part of the hero's journey is discovering the ego who are you? What are you? What do you stand for? And then you have to transcend the ego, right? So all this stuff about, well, Ray is a Mary Sue. Look at Geekdom 101's uh, chat that I did with him. And I talked about why Ray is not a Mary Sue. Yes, I insulted all the Mary Sue fanboys who can't come up with an original thought to save their own ass, right? Um, and I said that, look, if you actually look at Ray's character, you dive into her background. She knows how to fight because she's been an orphan. She's a pretty girl on a planet with some horny alien dude. She's probably had to fight to save her booty, literally, right? She's built ships. She knows all about ships. She's been flying uh, ship simulators. That that was her Xbox. Uh, that was her thing that she did on her downtime was play on the flight simulator. Luke Skywalker had the high score on the flight simulator before he went and blew up the Death Star. The previous high score was held by, uh, 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 what's his name? Wedge Antilles. Where did that happen? Well, you've got to see, this is, this is why I'm kind of insulting because you can't claim, you can't make an argument if you're not going to read everything because your argument's always going to fall apart. So in the farm boy, the scoundrel, the princess, whatever the name of that book is that has, uh, new scenes that have been added onto a new hope. Luke Skywalker has to be tested. He flies his flight simulator. The first time he blows up. The second time he like destroys Wedge's high score, like just obliterates it. Then what does he do? He gets in a in an X-Wing and blows up the Death Star and uses the force to guide the missile to to carry out to fulfill uh, Galen Erso's plan that the Jin Erso helped carry out. And this is part of Luke's hero's journey. This is part of him discovering his ego. I'm the hero of, of of blowing up the Death Star and I've been rolling off this string of victories. I meet this dude Yoda. I go into this dark side cave. I face my dark side. I'm ready to fight Vader, right? I cut Vader's head off. I, I have no problem. There's no issue with me in the dark side. I can do this. Ben, don't worry about me. I got it, yo. And what does Luke do? He goes to freaking confront Darth Vader, gets his hand cut off, gets his world rocked. When Vader says, look, everything that you've hated, I am the thing that you've hated. The last three years we've been playing this game of tic-tac-toe, this game of touch butt all through the galaxy. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you need to read the Star Wars comic books, right? That Vader down issue is uh, after Vader uh, has learned that Padme did have a child before she died. The records were covered up and uh, Dr. Aphra discovers that discovered all of that delivered that information to vader boba fett told vader that the name of the pilot who destroyed the death star is skywalker right and vader has confronted skywalker and knows that uh he was studying under ben or obi-wan kenobi and that he has the lightsaber of the jedi fallen jedi anakin skywalker that was lost on mustafar right so he rocks 
Luke's world when he says that I'm your father. I'm the person that you've hated all this time. So how does this all, what does this have to do with Ray and Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber belonging to her and the whole Mary Sue thing? And why these guys who obviously hate Ray need to chill the F out or just stop watching Star Wars if you get your panties in, in that bunch, little girls. And that's that right now, Ray doesn't know who she is, but she's developing an ego, right? And then she goes and meets Luke and this hero, this person she seems to have idolized, even though if you read Ray's uh, survival guide, she really didn't believe in the Force, right? She thought it was a myth and Luke Skywalker was a myth, but maybe... Maybe deep down, and we'll discover in episode eight, that she deep down wanted all this stuff to be true. And she actually did idolize Luke Skywalker. And when she was on Jakku waiting for her fa waiting for her people, because she doesn't actually say her parents, look closely. This is this is this is why it's important to be a detective, to think like an actual theologian. When we when we examine biblical texts, we look closely, we start to read between the lines and we look at what is actually being said. She never says, I'm looking for my family. I'm waiting for my parents to return. She always says my people who are her people. Right. Well, Maz Kanata says that, you know, those people that you're those folks that you're waiting to return, they're not coming back, but someone could still could. Right. She's basically saying you have the people that you feel you belong to. You belong to some other people and you've got to step outside of your comfort zone and find them. And that's when Ray says, Luke, the Jedi, this bigger mystery. You belong to this family, too. These are also your people, right? You've got to find Luke Skywalker, and then you've got to continue to find your people. This is part of Rey discovering herself, discovering her ego. And she's going to hit a point where everything is going great, but then things are going to crash down. She's going to get full of herself. She's going to get caught up in ego. She's going to reach that point where all this Mary Sue stuff, look, you finally found something that you're not good at. You're not going to succeed at this. You need more training. You need to humble yourself. And she's going to be humbled. She's going to be brought to her knees by Luke Skywalker, possibly by Kylo Ren, maybe by some other challenges that we don't even know about yet. So all this Mary Sue stuff, all the outrage about Ray receiving Anakin's lightsaber. Look, as far as I'm concerned, there are only two lightsabers in the known galaxy right now. Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber that Rey possesses and Kylo Ren's lightsaber. Now, I don't want to hear what if and and all this other nonsense. Look, if uh, if you're going to play the what if game, go to my buddy Stupendous Waves what if videos and you can you can play the what if game all you want. And that's not a knock against Stupendous Wave. He's got the number one Star Wars channel on YouTube right now, and that's based purely on the numbers, whether you like his content or not, uh, that doesn't matter. I'm just talking about numbers. He's number one. And some people like those what if videos. That's not what I do here. And that's like I said, it's not a knock against him. I don't like doing those. I like to talk about what I see. Sometimes I'll do what if just for fun. But what I see, what what I see and what I know, being conservative with my speculations there are only we've only seen two lightsabers, Kylo Ren's lightsaber and, and Anakin or Ray's lightsaber. It's Ray's lightsaber. It's in her possession. Anakin built it. He used it. It got passed on to Luke Skywalker. Now it's Ray's. But what is that? What is that lightsaber meant in the original trilogy? It was passed to Luke by Obi-Wan Kenobi, and it was part of his call to adventure. It was part of uh, restoring hope. A new hope has risen. Right. And this lightsaber, I talked about it in a video last summer about uh, the the being the the literal phallic symbol of power of representing the Skywalker legacy. Let's be mature here, guys, like for real. Uh, you know, I, I, y'all can make jokes and laugh, but let's let's we're talking serious right now. I, I'm not smiling. Um, my point is. Now Ray has that lightsaber and she's presented it back to Luke and maybe Luke has lost hope. Right. What we know is that he retreated to Octu. He retreated uh, to to he became a hermit. 
but he had honorable reasons. So it wasn't he was running because he was a coward. Some of it had to do with the fact that once again, a Jedi, a, a trained force user who happens to be part of the Skywalker bloodline is going to destroy the galaxy. And maybe this stuff just needs to go away. Maybe no one else needs to be taught. Hope is lost. And the only way that balance can be restored, as Laura Santeca said, is when the Jedi return. The Jedi must return to restore balance to the galaxy. And so when Luke is being presented with that lightsaber by, from Rey, it's his call to come back to the fold. It's also his call to adventure, right? His call back to adventure, to return, to, to restore the hope that he once had. He's the symbol of hope and he has to come back stronger, wiser, and pass on those boons to a new generation. And my point about there being only two lightsabers, Ray has to be trained. She has to fight. And part of her growth, part of shattering that ego is that she'll learn that she can't keep that lightsaber, right? A Jedi, part of their trial, they have to build and construct their own lightsaber. So a few months back in April, we were all excited. Dash was asking, or Dash has been asking for a long time, uh, is Ray going to use a double bladed lightsaber? And then I posted a video and people were excited about that. Will Ray get a double bladed lightsaber? Is she going to be like Bastila and Satil Shan? But then we say, well, Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber is now Ray's lightsaber. And people are pissed. She didn't do anything to earn it. Well, what is she going to what's she going to fight with, guys? How is she going to fight Kylo Ren with a staff? You're going to cut it in half. She's got to use that lightsaber. What 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 is she, how is she going to train? What's she going to train with? Like, seriously, think of think about think about things before you get outraged. That's that's what I don't like about fandoms as a whole. Star Wars fandoms Marvel Comics fandoms, people get outraged over the stupidest things because they don't think. And that's what I want to instill in the urban acolyte community. We think about things. Something gets announced. You step back, you meditate. That's why I talk about being mindful. Use your love for Star Wars to become a hero of your own story and become a force for change in your community. Keep on. Y'all remember to breathe. I'm not just spouting bullshit in my outro. I'm telling you how to train, how to live, how to live like a real Jedi. Some of you call me a Sith, but I'm a real person. And hey, an urban acolyte, you know, people keep trying to educate me. An acolyte is a Sith. Well, I keep telling you guys that the urban acolyte, like the, the urban acolyte that I that I looked at is kind of the ideal was Palpatine. And I say, look, just don't go out and try to take over the world. But there's nothing wrong with having ambition. Palpatine was very cunning and calculating. He didn't just spout off the first thing that was coming, the first thing that came to his mind. So even he was mindful. He just, his intentions were just, his attention and his intentions were directed on something that some people might consider nefarious, right? But you can still use that for whatever you want. It's not about right and wrong because right and wrong or I mean, they're, that's up for debate. Really, you can make anything right or wrong if you debate it long, hard enough. But my point is, think, think, people put on your thinking caps. Be mindful of the present moment. Be mindful of your thoughts. What did I say? Put your attention on your intentions and your intentions on your attention. Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber belongs to Rey. Is that something to be outraged over? No. Rey needs a lightsaber. She's got one. She's going to train. She's not yet a Jedi. Didn't Daisy Ridley say, I'm not sure that Rey is a Jedi after she'd almost wrapped on episode eight a year ago? Some of you are new, so you weren't here to see that video. But maybe you should take some time and go back. And when you join these fandom channels, look at their entire body of work. Just take some time. I mean, if you're going to spend that much time on YouTube anyway. 
because I can't go back and repeat stuff that I've said last year. I just assume people know. I assume that people knew that Daisy Ridley said, I'm not sure that Ray is going to be a Jedi by the end of episode eight. Maybe she never becomes a Jedi just because she uses a lightsaber and has force abilities and uses them. She said, well, Leia uses force abilities. Is she a Jedi, too? So let's think about this, guys. There's only she there's only one lightsaber and she doesn't. When is she at the opportunity to build a lightsaber? She hasn't. So she's going to do the best she can with what she has. And when she has more training, when we when she learns how to go out and locate a kyber crystal, maybe that happens in episode nine. Maybe it happens at the end of episode nine. Maybe the Jedi never are restored until the very end of this saga, or maybe they aren't restored at all. Right. That's that's something that's on the table, because uh, according to what I've been reading, this saga was never all laid out and planned out. There was seven and then uh, the team got together for eight. Well, sort of. And eight was written and the plans for nine have been scrapped. Right. Colin Trevorrow said that Leia would have a big part in nine. And he started writing nine back in December when we were all talking about Rogue One. And now all those plans have been set aside back to the drawing board. And whatever happens, well, maybe in a year from now, after uh, the hype from Han Solo has died down, we might be talking about it because uh, two years from now, we uh, episode nine will be in theaters. Right. It's coming out. What? May 2019, May 20. Yeah. Like the end of May, I think May 25th, 2019. So two years away next year, we'll be talking Han Solo. So until then, we just have to wait and see how things are going to play out. We're going to keep breathing. We're going to be rational. And all those, uh, all that fanboy outrage. Well, uh, I don't know. Maybe by then uh, they will have said, I'm not watching Prince, man, but I'm not watching Urban Acolyte. Fuck that guy, man. He he told me I'm estrogen dominant and I don't think rationally. And he's right. And he's so right that I'm just not going to support him because I can't stand the fact that he called me out and he was right. But I talked long enough. I didn't mean to talk this long, but I guess this was a Star Wars chat. So what are you guys thoughts have I made you think anything any differently about Ray having that lightsaber? Are you comforted? Because that's what I really want to do. I mean, yeah, I, I, I toss some insults, but it's all out of love. It's all out of humor. But I am serious. If you're dealing with estrogen dominance, seriously, check out my my bro Mike Mahler's products on his website. There are great reviews. Mike isn't paying me to do this. He shouts me out on his podcast, the Live Life Aggressively podcast on iTunes and Stitcher all the time. And uh, it's the art of reciprocity. I am trying to return the favor. So check out Mike and Sincere on the Live Life Aggressively podcast. Check out Mike Mahler's uh, website for the best supplements on the market for male performance. And I don't mean like Viagra. I mean, well, they, they might work that way too, but I mean just performance at life. There's red, uh, which is a, uh, uh, helps you if you've got issues with adrenal fatigue, the testosterone booster, which will help you in the gym and in the bedroom. And there's uh, his uh, systemic enzyme restore enzyme product. If you're having issues with digestion or anything related to inflammation. And if your uh, bathroom smells like a crime scene, when you finish, you need to be on uh, you need to be on restore enzyme. But anyway, that's all I got for this one. So if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead, click on that subscribe button so that you can take your first steps towards becoming an urban acolyte. Take the steps necessary to become a hero of your own story and become a force for change in your community. That's uh, really all I've got to talk about on this episode. I'm going to um, probably record a non-spoiler review of Wonder Woman, which I saw last night, and then I'm going to go back again and watch it tomorrow so that I can work on my full review, which I will probably post on Sunday. The movie was awesome. If you haven't seen it yet, 
uh, and you love fight scenes like me, you will love it. Anyway, uh, look forward to that. And then in addition, I'm going to try to get all caught up on all the American Gods reviews uh, that I have to do uh, so that uh, next week I can uh, be up to speed. Uh, so I'm going to have a pretty busy weekend. So lots to look forward to. Anyway, that's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. Y'all keep on breathing and may the force of others be with you always.